Hello, I'm Sarah. I served in the Philippines Bacolod Mission, um, speaking Hiligaynon, and I got home about six months ago, so it's been a little bit now, but it was the absolute best, happiest, craziest, hottest experience of my whole life, and I would still relive it and do it again and again if I could. There were so many things that I learned. Um, every single day was a new lesson. Every single day was um, a new challenge, a new opportunity to take advantage of, and um, I loved it. I remember my very first night in the mission fields. So day one, I had just gotten there. Um, I just met my trainer. Um, she was a native, and so we went back to our area, which was um, kind of far from the city. And we got on the bus and we rode it there and um, showed up to um, our area. I remember getting into bed that night, and I remember looking at my bed, and it was just covered in bugs. Like the mattress, just everywhere you look, you could put your hand down and it would just be covered in bugs. And um, I remember seeing that and I was this cultured, shocked American who um, had never experienced that before and I looked at my trainer and there was a big language barrier. She didn't speak very, um, speak a ton of English and um, obviously I didn't speak much Hiligaynon. And um, I remember looking at that and kind of freaking out and saying, shoot, this is going to be harder than I thought. This isn't going to be... Um, just easy every day and happy every day, but I remember going into the back room and kneeling down and praying and I said, Heavenly Father, there's so many things that um, that I'm gonna be challenged with on my mission and I can, I can live in this house, I can live without air conditioning, I can wash my clothes by hand, I can do all the things that we were doing in the Philippines, um, but I said, I don't think I can get into my bed right now knowing it's covered completely with bugs. And I just kind of said, Heavenly Father, just take care of it, I can't do it. And I walked back into my bed and I looked at the mattress and every single thing was gone. It was just perfectly clean. And I got into my bed that night and I, um, I just said a prayer of gratitude and I said, thank you so much for um, helping me. And that was a really cool lesson for me to learn on day one of my mission because um, it, emphasized, it emphasized a really cool truth that um, stayed with me for probably until the rest of my life. Um, that Heavenly Father is going to be there to help us. And I think um, no matter how hard our trials are, no matter um, how many um, hard things that we go through, He's there with us every step of the way. And He was there with me every day of my mission. And He knew my limits and He knew what I could handle, what I couldn't handle. And I think that's the beauty of the atonement as well. And the beauty of um, accessing the power of Christ in our lives every day. Um, so that was a really cool experience that I learned um, from, from day one. It was the first thing. Um, that I wrote about in my journal getting to the Philippines was that that small miracle that I saw um, in my life and I continued to see miracles every single day of my mission. Um, there were days that were hard and really hot and I'd just be sweating from head to toe and I just didn't um, know what to do <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I loved it and all of the hard things were so worth it. Um, there was never a hard thing that I went through that I wasn't grateful for at the end. Um, every hard companion I had, every, um, every hard transfer, every hard area, every hard day when people didn't want to hear our message, um, at the end of the day I could always look back and say, I learned from all of these experiences and I learned from every trial, I learned from every challenge and I became better because of it. Um, I think that's one of the really cool things about a mission is its, um, is its ability to transform us as people. I was transformed by my mission. I changed because of my mission and because of Heavenly Father and His love for me and for the chances that He took on me um, as a representative of His Son. And um, that's one thing I'll forever be grateful for um, because of my mission and those 18 months that I wore Christ's name over my heart every single day um, is the change that I saw in myself and also the change that I saw in other people. Um, we were teaching this one woman, um, her name is Rika. And she, um, she was not um, very receptive to her message in the beginning. She didn't really want to listen to missionaries and she was very set on her religion. She was super happy with where her life was and um, she didn't think she needed anything else. But um, we gave her a Book of Mormon and she took it and she said, okay sisters, um, whatever you say, I'll, I'll take this book. And we said, okay, and we promise you that um, you will see God's hand in your life if you read this book. And so we kind of walked away and just kind of left it at that. We didn't know 
if anything would even come of that because she was kind of closed off to us. Um, but we went back um, the next week and we asked her, we said, Sister, how is your Book of Mormon reading going? Have you been able to read it? And um, she looked at us with tears in her eyes and she said, Sisters, this is a true book. And we asked her how she knew that. And the night before we had come back, there was this huge, crazy storm. Um, they call all the big storms typhoons over there. They had the huge typhoon the night before. And their house was just out of, um, it was just made out of bamboo. Um, so it wasn't super strong. And um, a common problem over there is um, damage in their houses just because they don't have very sturdy foundations, um, especially um, in the stormy season. And so um, the night before there was a crazy storm and she was scared and she gathered all her kids around and she said, I don't think we're gonna make it through this storm. Our house is gonna be destroyed. Um, the trees were blowing like crazy. Um, you could just see the wind going a million miles an hour, she said. And um, and as she was gathering her children around, her as she was gathering her children around, she remembered our promise that she would see God's hand in her life if she read the Book of Mormon. And so at that moment, she grabbed the Book of Mormon, and she knelt down and she said a prayer. And she said, Heavenly Father, if this is a true book, if what the sister said is true. Show me a miracle through the storm. And as soon as she said amen and ended her prayer, she said everything around her just went silent. So all the, all the trees that were blowing at a million degrees, all the crazy rain on their roof that was coming in their house, she said everything just went still. And at that moment is when she felt in her heart and knew for a surety that the Book of Mormon is a true book, that it is actually the Word of God. And that was, a, that was an experience that I will never forget hearing. Um, I will never forget her telling us that and the peace that I felt and that confirmation that I felt in my heart as she told us that story. Um, and I think that's one more cool thing about the mission is that um, every single day my testimony was confirmed and my testimony was um, strengthened as I saw other people grow closer to the Savior and as I saw other people's lives change and I saw miracles in everybody else's lives and miracles in my own life. Um, Every single day I could say, I could get into my bed and I could say, this church is so true. My testimony has been so strengthened. And um, that's one thing I'm forever grateful for. And I loved my mission, I loved every single day. It was the best 18 months of my life and I'm excited to keep moving forward and to keep having more awesome experiences like that and to grow closer to my savior.